here this evening for a hustings meeting. The Federation of Small Businesses has invited the candidates for the Euro elections to come and talk to their members. It's important because the voice of small businesses needs to be heard in the European Parliament. This meeting has been organised by the local branch of the Federation of Small Businesses. Martin, what do you think this meeting is going to achieve this evening? Well, I'm, I'm hoping that the small businesses in this region will get a chance to talk directly to candidates and hear firsthand what they think the issues really are and, and explore how, they, uh, how they're going to tackle some of the thorny problems that um, bedevil small businesses in this part of the world. What do you intend to get out of this uh, meeting? What's, what, what, what do you think the objective is? I think the objective is to find out why anybody should bother to go out and vote for anybody standing for this very, very distant European Parliament. It is, um, it is not really, the issues of the European Parliament are not something that really engage with people on a day-to-day -day level. They excite kind of visceral hatreds in some quarters of the population, but I think most people find Europe a very distant and disengaging proposition. So it'll be interesting to see whether any of the candidates um, can inspire people to actually go out and vote. One of the problems, of course, is that the voice of small business is swamped by the voice, very loud voice, of big business. Uh, yes, um, uh, but this sort of event here um, enables those small businesses to actually get one-to-one -one time with the, with the candidates and to uh, uh, press their sweaty hands. So, um, so this is a good opportunity to raise those questions. Well, I think it's really important to have a discussion with local small business owners and, um, and activists about what they expect from their European members of, the, of Parliament um, after the election, but also to discuss what Labour's agenda is in terms of um, business development, in terms of regional development, and what our perspective is in terms of the value that we think the North East has from the European Union. Um, and have an exchange of views around that. I think often these hustings throw up very interesting ideas that then kind of ferment, you make contact with people and then those contacts open new doors that you're, you're not expecting afterwards. But clearly, um, good organised small business is essential um, and that's why organisations like the FSB are very important. Why is it important that you're here talking to us? Well, small businesses are the backbone of the economy and uh, really employ most of, uh, uh, of, of the UK's workforce. 85% um, of new jobs that are uh, being created in the economy are actually created by small businesses, so it's a, it's a vital part of the economy, a crucial part of the economy, and we need to make sure that uh, rules that are put in place at a European level actually work for small businesses and work for small businesses here in the North East. Is it true to say that when your party is talking to the business community, it's the big business that gets the, the word in. Big business is heard above small businesses. Well, big businesses obviously play uh, play a big role, but the important thing is that small businesses play uh, an even bigger role in the supply chain. And as I said, most people are actually employed in a, in a small business or by a small business. So uh, when we look at uh, job statistics, that's where we really need to, need to work. And if we look at the European unemployment of about 23 million unemployed people in Europe, and we look at the number of uh, small businesses of 23 million uh, uh, small businesses across Europe, if each SME just were able to employ one more person, we could solve Europe's unemployment problem so I think there's a real challenge out there to find out what is stopping SMEs employing people how can we try and uh, make uh, help businesses uh, employ more people what do you intend to get out of this meeting why are you here talking to small business people well, we in UKIP are a very pro-business partner. I mean, I myself believe that we've got to cut tax, we've got to cut regulation, and we've got to get out of the European Union to give business, especially here in the North East, the best chance that we can to succeed, to create jobs, and to create wealth and create business. So that's why I'm here. I want to talk to business people, and I want them to engage them about this European election campaign, which is so vital. Some people say that big business always gets the voice in the media, and that small business gets left out. Is that what happens when business is talking to you, Kip, that you listen to big business, but small businesses, their voice isn't heard. No, we understand in UKIP that, you know, 60% of 
the people in the private sector who work for small firms, you know, small to medium sized businesses. I mean, I myself run a, a business myself, a small business. So I understand that, you know, small businesses and medium sized businesses are the backbone of the British economy. So we want to try and help small businesses, we want to try and help medium sized businesses, also we want to help big businesses, but we realise that the majority of people work in small or medium sized businesses. What do you hope to get out of this meeting? Oh, well, we hope to put across our platform for the European elections. I've been in the European Parliament representing the North East now for 15 years, so I'll be hoping to talk about my track record of working and supporting business uh, in the region and putting forward our parties and my policies for uh, supporting small businesses, uh, but effectively all businesses in the North East in the future. Some people say that when the Conservative Party is talking to business, it is talking to large business and that small businesses don't get a voice in. Um, I don't think that's true at all, actually. I've always been convinced that uh, the future of the country is actually small and or SME, small and medium-sized enterprises, as the saying goes. Of course, big business uh, we have to listen to. They're very important. But you know, the future, in my view, of, um, of, of the economy will be small, medium-sized companies uh, in the future. Uh, they're often not the ones with professional lobbying outfits or professional PR and corporate departments. So. That's why I think it's especially important to, uh, to, to bear their interests in mind, and that's what I've done over the years. Are you finding that um, the interest in the Euro elections is not as good as it has been in the past, or is it increasing? I'm saying, generally speaking, which way is it going? Um, I think interest in all forms of politics is on the decline, um, from uh, parish council elections right up to European elections. Uh, European elections have never been the most popular of elections um, and I think really the policy debate is being overtaken by the in-out debate um, which will be very interesting to see how it goes here um, where I think more people are interested in working out whether we should be in or whether we should be out rather than working out how the European Union and Parliament is actually working for us. And um, we are here to hust our candidates um, for the uh, North East seat for the uh, European Parliament. So um, the first question is from Grace Davies. I'm Grace and in the 2019 <laughs> European elections I'll be able to vote but why should I vote for any of you? Yeah. Most adults don't vote for MEPs. What would enthuse a young person to go out and vote? Thank you for the question. Um, it's the first time I get asked what people should do at the next election rather than at uh, this uh, election. And who knows whether any of us will be candidates at the next uh, election. Um, well, obviously, I think in, uh, in every election you should vote um, Conservative, unsurprisingly, um, because I think we offer the best uh, uh, choice for the country's future, both at a national level and, um, and at a European level. Um, we uh, came into government in um, 2010 because the background of the country was almost bankrupt. Um, together with the Liberal Democrats in coalition, we've, uh, we've entrenched the recovery now. The, the economy is now uh, expanding, uh, but we still, there's still an awful lot more work to do. So I think uh, in national elections, you should certainly vote Conservative to ensure that the re recovery continues and that we um, continue to fix the economy from the mess that Labour left it in. <laughs> my, my question really is around um, opportunities for small businesses uh, in the North East because we have um, a large number of small businesses here and also family owned and run businesses and I'd like to find out what opportunities um, the parties would be doing to help those businesses uh, tender in for opportunities that come up in the North East and support small businesses to do that, but also help them to look at other areas as well, such as exporting, et cetera, et cetera. So that's really my question is, how will you support so, you know, those small companies and there's a large contingent within the North East? If I take uh, the two points that you made, the tendering and exports, one of the things that uh, Labour MEPs have worked on very closely is uh, the revision of the public procurement rules at European level um, and the inclusion of um, more social and environmental clauses in public procurement rules and the inclusion of clauses which allow and support um, local employment um, more through, through procurement. I think that's a really key thing. If you look at somewhere like Newton Aycliffe and the Hitachi 
um, site in Newton Aycliffe. One of the key um, elements in the deal of bringing Hitachi to Newton Aycliffe was to argue that there should be a high proportion of local suppliers supplying into um, the site. And that's then created a, a wide range of opportunities for, for local businesses. So I think on the tendering side, there's the public procurement framework, which um, kind of I think we should use much more effectively in this country. I think it's used much more effectively in other countries um, than the UK. And I would be quite interested um, if there are businesses who are, who are interested in that area to have a discussion afterwards about how that could, um, could develop. One of the, the, the important messages for this, for this meeting, in a way, is for small businesses, for businesses to actually um, engage with their MEPs. And if there is an issue, just like uh, Martin was saying, MEPs can help businesses at an investments level. They can go and speak to ministers, they can raise issues, they can uh, work with businesses to make legislation work for them. And the same is true for the European level. So there's a, um, I think it's really important that businesses engage with their locally elected um, representatives. Um, I think we need to have lower, simpler, flatter taxes. You know, we've got to help businesses because businesses are the ones that create jobs, create wealth, and create the tax revenue that we ultimately spend on the health service, on the armed forces, on the police, and all the priorities that we have. So yes, we've got to have a very good pro-business approach, and we certainly in UKIP do. And we want to see that, we want to see this. But the one thing we don't want to see is we don't want to see higher taxes and higher regulations. And since 2010, the European Union has added 3,500 new regulations onto small and medium-sized businesses. Now that's not helping businesses, it's not helping them create more jobs, it's not helping them create more wealth, it's hindering them. So we've got to try and obviously get out of the European Union. Another thing that's important is we've got to be able to trade with the rest of the world. The European Union, the European area of the European Union, accounts for 18% of GDP, global GDP. We could, if we left the European Union, set up free trade agreements with the rest of the world, the 82% of the rest of the world. So yes, we want to trade with Europe, but we should want to trade with the rest of the world as well. And if, as long as we're tied to the European Union, we can't even do that, because we can't make our own trade deals. So I think that's important. Um, you know, if you think about it, 60% of people who work in the private sector work for a small or medium-sized business. So these are the backbone of our economy. We've got to help them, we've got to cut tax, we've got to cut regulation, We've got to get out of the EU, which is strangling the British economy. Okay, brilliant. Martin, you can't disagree with a lot of that, apart from that final sentence about getting out of Europe. Lower, simpler, flatter taxes. Uh, I certainly agree with uh, lower taxes, but let me pick up one or two of the points that, uh, that Philip has made. There's nothing stopping business trading with the rest of the world. They do in the North East very, very successfully. I visited uh, a company yesterday that, uh, that already trades with, uh, with China, with India, with, uh, with, with America. So, you know, they, of course, we need, uh, we need less regulation and we need more free trade zones. I'm not That's disagreeing with that at all. Um, from the North East, our exports, roughly 40% of them go to the EU single market and roughly 60% goes to the rest of the world. Now, I'm a passionate believer in free trade. Free trade is almost always a good thing. And the more tariffs and barriers we can eliminate across the world in trade is a good thing. It's a very technically complex subject. Various countries protect their markets, they restrict uh, access. It's all about using the influence and the muscle that you've got to prize open those markets. The, the point I was making was around small businesses and in terms of public procurement as well, is that small businesses, if they're micro companies, should have the support and opportunity, the same as a larger company, to bid in if they've got the right people, the right skills, the right product to do that <coughs> job. And I don't think that has been the case, and I don't think enough has been done within that. That was really where I was coming from.